What's up guys, you're back with your man Tech Nick, your go-to guy for videos on the latest tech. Now, unfortunately, this is not about the real latest tech right now, because I just went on a two-week vacation to Australia to take some crazy awesome footage on some two budget-friendly flagship phones, which I'll definitely be bringing you guys in the coming days, so stay tuned for that one. So thank you for being patient with me, guys, and I do indeed have the Redmi K20 Pro here with me, even though it released around a week ago. I have it here on my channel to give you guys my thoughts and opinion on the device and whether its low price point is actually great value for money. It has incredible specs to go up against top dogs such as the OnePlus 7 Pro. It has very similar cameras at the back of the phone, a very similar design, a slightly smaller screen, no curves, a lower resolution, but it still has 4K 60fps video recording, still has a pop-up camera, it still has a crazy great Snapdragon 855 processing chip. It also has 8 gigs of RAM, 64, all the way up to 256 gigs of storage. A headphone jack, which is an up from the OnePlus 7 Pro, but it does not have an IP certification or micro SD card support. It also lacks a few slight premium features, but is still crazy great value for money. Though I'm still excited to see if this low starting at $360 price tag is really worth it since the likes of the ZTE Accent 10 Pro is already out and is striking quite a bit of attention due to its crazy all round blender features and a little more than this I must say. But this is what the hype is about since this is the successor to the Poco F1, the Poco Phone F1. So in some countries this will be released as a Poco Phone F2, in some countries this will be released as the Xiaomi Mi 9T Pro, as well as the Mi 9T without the pop-up and just that little teardrop notch. But this is indeed the Chinese variant, so it is the Redmi K20 Pro. I'm really excited to get going here guys, so without further ado, let's go! Oh, and there we go. So the first thing you see is indeed not the phone, but this little dragon here it is known as the flagship killer right now. So let's go ahead and find out if it indeed is. So the first thing that we see is this little box over here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that to check what's in it. We have the little pin over there and opening it up. You can see that we do indeed have a cover and yes guys, yes, this is a hard case cover just like I saw with the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3, which I really praised. I really do prefer hard cases just like this one and I'm really glad to see that Xiaomi have included it with the Redmi K20 Pro. I'll leave that to the side and we'll jump onto it later. And inside we do indeed have a USB type C cable, but bear in mind that this is one of the points where it does not indeed kill the flagship since it only has a USB rating of 2.0 speeds. So you will not get those crazy fast transfer speeds between your PC and your mobile device as well as OTG speeds. Nevertheless, it is paired with a pretty great fast charger at 27 watts though i'm not sure if the 27 watt block is indeed paired and yes it does indeed only come with an 18 watt charging block in the device which kind of sucks because the xiaomi mi 9 chinese version did indeed come with a 27 watt charging block in the box um, but i do have two of those lying around in the house so i will indeed be using a 27 watt charging block in my battery charge test for this great incredible device here. And before we get going to the phone itself, here it is guys, it looks really great. I just wanna go ahead and quickly pop it in the cover. So let's go slap it in here. It feels really great guys, this cover's really nice. It definitely covers up that little camera bump at the back and it feels really sturdy. I really like the cutouts at the top and bottom. This is a really great cover. I don't even think I'm going to need to buy an external cover. So that's really good to see. I decided to not go with the blue or red version, but instead I went with the carbon black since so many people are reviewing those blue and red version phones and I'm really interested to see how this carbon black turns out. So in the light you can definitely see those little carbon black lines and I think they look really, really e epic guys. The phone feels really premium in the hand. This is Gorilla Glass 5 in the back and the front so it's not as premium as Gorilla Glass 6. Once again, not a flagship killer 
point over there but nevertheless it feels nice and sturdy and this these colors look really awesome i really do dig this carbon black finish just as was seen on the lenovo z5 pro gt earlier on this year which was indeed the first snapdragon 855 flagship phone but it does not even compete with this bad boy right over here so let's go ahead and check around the rest of the points of this device so we've seen that wonderful color over here then we do have a triple camera setup at the back here we do indeed have a sony imax 586 sensor as the main camera over here which is great but it does have a lower aperture as opposed to the other imax 586 sensor phones out there so this uses a 48 megapixel snapper and then binds all the 48 megapixels into a 12 megapixel shot so that it takes an incredible shot but guys please stay tuned for my full camera review on all of these lenses we also have a 8 megapixel telephoto lens and while most 2019 flagships these days are doing three times optical zoom this is only doing two times so that's another cutback there to lower the price and in my opinion isn't such a big deal since the difference between two times and three times optical zoom is not that huge though it should decrease the quality of digital zoom quite a bit so i'm interested to see that in the camera review so like i said stay tuned for that and then we also have the ultra wide view sensor over here which is indeed a 13 megapixel snapper which gives you those super ultra wide shots so i'll have a look at the camera in a bit but at the back we also have this little redmi logo here designed by xiaomi so it looks very similar to any other xiaomi phone now taking a look along the side over here we do indeed have a power button and though it is not textured it is red so it looks really great and throws that black off quite nicely we then have a volume rocker at the top here which is not split unfortunately but it feels nice and sturdy and clicks quite well then along the sides over here we have these nice rounded corners and we do indeed have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which is a really good thing to see we also have this wonderful pop-up sensor which feels nice and sturdy just like the oneplus 7 pro we'll get to that in a bit with a side-by-side -side view then on the left we have a nice clean side over here and yep yeah, absolutely nothing we just have an antenna line not even the sim tray and then going to the bottom we find that dual sim tray over there so there it is, no micro SD card support, but it is indeed dual SIM, so that's a good thing to see. Then we have the single downward firing speaker, which is unfortunately not paired with the earpiece over here, like many phones do deliver Dolby Atmos through that way, through a wonderful stereo speaker advantage there, so this does not have that. Then we have the USB Type-C port, which I did mention earlier is limited to 2.0 speeds over there. So taking a look at the front of the phone over here, going ahead and peeling this off, this is indeed a 6 0.39 inch AMOLED display and that's really great to see since I am a sucker for AMOLED displays and we're going to go ahead and start this puppy right up. Here is the screen to add our fingerprint sensor so we're going to go ahead and add it. It is indeed an in-display fingerprint sensor and this is an optical one not an ultrasonic one as seen on the S10 plus so it is very similar to the likes of the OnePlus 7 Pro and all the previous phones before that so let's go ahead and set that up. All set up guys, you're ready to rock. I like how they've changed that up a bit. And this is indeed running on MIUI 10, which is really great guys. Let's swipe up and start up the system. So there it is over there, as you can see, MIUI 10 looks nice, great, and very clean. Quite stock, I must say, compared to previous Xiaomi phones that we have seen in the past of 2018 and 2017 alike it is a really awesome phone here guys and this 6.39 inch amoled screen definitely steals the show though i think it does have a little bit of a bezel over there especially at the bottom so you can see a tiny bit of a chin there you guys can see over there that the chin on the oneplus 7 pro is indeed a tiny bit smaller and because the oneplus 7 pro does indeed have a curved led panel over here here the bezels on the side do come across as a little bit thinner to the ones seen on the k20 pro nevertheless looking at these two phones right here side by side you can indeed see that the k20 pro is a lot smaller and that is because the oneplus 7 pro does have this wonderfully big 6.67 inch display where the k20 pro is limited to that 6.39 inch display but that's all right in my book since pretty much every single phone under the sun in the last year has been released at 6.39 inches so i am really used to that and it is a nice feeling size in the hand here guys and its weight is really good this oneplus 7 pro is absolutely massive and seriously heavy the heaviest phone i have ever tested out nevertheless let's keep our focus on the k20 pro and see if the Facial recognition actually works as it does on the OnePlus 7 Pro. Okay guys, so I have indeed looked around settings and there is no way to use 
facial recognition with the pop-up cam as you can indeed do with the OnePlus 7 Pro. So that is a bit of a bummer for me because I do tend to use that quite a bit on my OnePlus 7 Pro, which I actually didn't expect. But nevertheless, we do have this wonderful in-display fingerprint sensor. So let's go ahead and test that out. It seems to work quite snappy, guys, and distance. Uh, it is, I would say, a little bit improved over the Xiaomi Mi 9 and it's it's definitely more consistent since i've had some serious issues with my mi 9 unit over there though it does seem a tad slower than the one plus 7 pro as i can show you guys over here how quick the 7 pro is it is just ridiculously fast animations are set on here so you guys can see how the k20 pro is slightly slower in that department but nevertheless it is nice and consistent and it is still a great feature to have in a flagship killer of 2019. so i just want to go ahead and test out the camera guys i do indeed have my wonderful cap that i got in surface paradise in australia um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into the camera over here and say we've got it ultra wide mode okay that's great and show us the money there we go there is the back camera quality over there guys let's focus on it here take a snap and let's have a look here the quality looks really great in person here guys and yeah it does do it justice on this recording as well you can see the serious quality over there guys i'm really excited to see how this stacks up in a full review but just taking a look at some of the camera modes over there so we have ultra wide we have one times and then we have two times optical so it has all the features that you could possibly want as well as 48 megapixel mode which will definitely work the best in outdoor scenarios so going ahead and switching it over to the selfie cam over here now guys we're going to see that wonderful pop-up camera over there which i'm really excited to give a, a little quick go over here three two one Okay, there we go guys. Let me know what you guys think of my new little haircut there. Nevertheless, there is a picture. I think it looks pretty great. You can definitely see the level of detail in my beard over there. So, I mean, it, it seems like a great all-round phone and I'm not sure if you guys did indeed see. There is actually an LED over here and the only other phone that I saw with that on was the Vivo X27 and X27 Pro. There it is. It looks really great, guys. The colors are really cool on the LED pop-up and I'm really excited about that but it just it doesn't really show at the back there guys i just wanted to point that out so uh, it does apparently double up as a notification light through here though you might not be able to see if it is if it is at an angle like that but you may likely be able to see it if it is showing this way shooting onto the table or any surface that you are currently on which is really cool to see now another thing that oneplus does indeed have as many of you guys do know is that if you do indeed go ahead and use the selfie camera when you drop the phone it automatically retracts the camera over there which is really great technology and i just wanted to go ahead and see if the redmi k20 pro doesn't do does indeed do that as well so let's go ahead and test it out it does do it guys that is really flipping cool that is not something that you would expect to see on a phone that is so much cheaper than the oneplus 7 pro you could have two of these for one of those guys this is the redmi k20 pro and so far i am really really impressed and let me know if you guys are just as impressed as i am so there you guys have it, the Redmi K20 Pro, and this is the carbon black finish, and I'm really digging the finish of this phone. It also has some great design elements over here, such as that separated camera at the top in its three camera module setup over there, which is said to take some great pictures, and I can't wait to give it a run for its money. And speaking of that selfie cam, we have LED strips over there as you can see there guys you cannot see it from the back which kind of sucks and you can see it from the front so if i put it from a little bit of an angle over there you guys can slightly see the leds over there which is cool but the x27 the vivo x27 that is showed it from all different angles which would have helped with that notification led thing that they are trying to implement with the pop-up camera over there talking about that pop-up camera it is not used for facial recognition as it can be used on the oneplus 7 pro so that is a slight disappointment though the camera quality on it looks really great with that 20 megapixel 
megapixel snapper. Nevertheless, it does come up a little bit slow, but the positive thing over there is that when you do decide to go ahead and drop your phone, it does retract just like it does with the OnePlus 7 Pro, which was not implemented with previous pop-up phones before the OnePlus 7 Pro. Other than that, we have this wonderful in-display fingerprint sensor, which is really cool, but unfortunately, there is no other way to unlock your device other than using that fingerprint sensor. But the good thing is, it is really consistent and it is pretty speedy, but I'll definitely bring you guys more information on that in the full review. The phone is truly royal, guys. I must say, it does not feel as cheap as it is. It looks really premium and starting at just 360 US dollars for the six gigs of RAM, 64 gig unit is really incredible. Though I must just add that 64 gigs of storage really isn't enough in 2019, guys. So I decided to get the eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs version, and that goes for around $400. But bear in mind that when it does get a global launch in India, Russia, and Europe, and so on and so forth, it will go up a bit, maybe starting at around 400 euros over there guys so keep that in mind and I will keep you guys in mind if I hear any other information about the global launch of the K20 Pro releasing as the Xiaomi Mi 9T Pro and the Pocophone F2 which the first one was stated as a flagship killer and this is indeed a flagship killer no doubt though it does have some flaws such as no IP certification limited to full HD plus resolution, no curved sides over there, it does not support a micro SD card slot, so on and so forth. So there are a couple things that take away from that flagship feel, but when holding it in the hand and using this wonderful AMOLED 6.39 inch display with HDR10 capabilities, I must say I'm really impressed right off the bat, and I cannot wait to bring you guys a full review as well as plenty tests on this flagship killer. So until next time guys, this is Technic.